don't actually know what the process is. So, you know, we actually need to put these guys to task because for as long as we're not registering or we're not asking questions, they're not going to actively now make an effort to make sure that we're getting paid. Because the more content they keep and it goes into their known folder after three, four years, you can't claim that money back. And this is why a lot of our stars over the years haven't been able to support their families because their stuff was big on radio, right? But because they just couldn't place a barcode to it to say, listen, this is my song. This is how I've registered it. This is where the song is getting played, right? Mm -hmm. We're not able to keep music. So I think I just wanted to encourage people that it's very important for people to keep track of their music and especially from the inception point because I know as artists, we get excited about my song is ready. I want to release it. I want to release it next week. The administration or part of it and the paperwork part of it is very important. No matter what region you're in. Because moving on to the digital aspect, which is something I want to focus a lot more because the advantage with digital is that you see and how much money you're making at any given po at any given moment but you need to actually make sure that your stuff is sorted in order for you to then make be getting that from, um, from your digital sales and that's what we actually need to then focus on as africa because if we focus a lot more on digital we'll be able to actually see some real money i don't know my, my connection seems seems to be breaking i don't know if everyone got what i was saying yes uh, i i think everybody got what you're saying um Speaking of digital and uh, global globalizing our African music, you know, um, I noticed you tweeted something about exporting music. You know, you, you talked about trading music over the borders, shipping music. How can you help a, yeah. a developing artist strategize, uh, strategize so that they can um, make use of such an opportunity? Because honestly speaking, I was about there's no okay so. Yeah, you can continue. Um, okay. So the first thing is first, right? what are guys' actual plans? Like I always go back to saying, it's very hard for you to focus on something if there's no plan. It's like even getting into a relationship. You can get into a relationship with a girl, and if you get into the relationship with, with a girl for the wrong reasons, you're probably not going to enjoy it a few months later. And it's the same thing with this music thing. You know, that you need to actually have a plan. If your plan is, listen, I want to be a global superstar, right? That's the end goal. You now then have to look back and trace it back. Like, okay, in order for me to go global, what territories do I actually want to get into? I think that's the first thing that we always miss because whatever country we're from, it's difficult for us to actually break into those markets if we're local artists, right? Because the consumer behavior is that once something is consumed somewhere else, you know, and this is the power of, of influence. If I hear about one of you guys from Forbes, I've got a better chance of spending more time listening to it or paying more attention to it because it came from a referral or it came from someone who I actually um, see valuable or, you know, has got some sort of like record with how they've done music and all that kind of stuff. So it's easy. It's a lot easier to break in that way. But the other thing as well you need to watch out for is that there are a lot of scam, scam artists. So you get people who come to you and say, yo, listen, give me your music. I can get it to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And if it's not part of your plan, it's very easy for you to, number one, be scammed out of your money. Two, to actually lose control of your music because there are a lot of people who are giving up their music and they actually don't know who owns it. Um, but getting back to the question, how do you break into international or how do you break globally? I'll give you an example of um, the guys that I'm working with right now. I'm working with Dr. Chai and, and Bantu, and they're based in the States. Um, and these guys have been producing for the past four or five years, and they've worked with like, some amazing artists from Chris Brown, um, Pitbull, you know, you can name all of the, the American artists, Cardi B, they've, they've worked with them as producers. But as artists, we've had to focus a lot more on what story we're actually selling, right? Because the story is always important. And you see that with Nigeria, the one thing I love about them is that they're so patriotic 
about who they are. So everything about them becomes local, from the sound, the way they dress, the language, right? And then all of those things are, now, are then packaged. So once those things are then packaged, right, it's now a matter of, okay, where do I want to actually put this product that I have? I think we need to be very intentional about realizing that our music is really a product. Compared to tobacco, Zimbabwe produces the greatest tobacco, right? But the only way it can be exported is the way that it's packaged. You understand? So we need to pay a lot more attention to how we package our music. From the press kits that we do, from the way that we look on social media, from the way that we engage with people on social media. Because the more we engage with people on social media and the more we make people aware of who we are, it then becomes easier for people to refer people. Music is really a relationship, a relationship game. You get more out of it from the people who actually talk about you. That's how it goes. And then you see that the bigger people uh, or the people who become bigger become big because the people in the different, um, the, the, the different mouthpieces, right, have got a bigger platform. So your job is to just make sure that you get into someone who's got a bigger platform. And the basic way you start is, who are the local bloggers in your area? Who are the guys who actually write on music? Who are the guys who are interested in music, right? And this is from a digital space. So once you actually identify those people and you can say, okay, I know one, two, three, four, five people who talk about music, who write about music, um, who actually commentate on music, right? You approach those people and you do it in a very humble and very professional way. You let them know that, listen, this is what I do. I represent so-and-so, or this is my music, or this is what I've done for the past few years. You put this all on paper. Make sure that you've got a profile, right? Because once you've got a profile, if I don't look at it today, right, and then I get a song from you next week, next month, or in the next three months, right, and I hear it somewhere else, as soon as I go back to my emails, I can always go and pull up and be like, oh, okay, this is where this guy has actually come from. So when I then connect with you, I have a better understanding of who you are already. And all I'm now just doing is trying to make sure I understand where you're trying to go. So be able to communicate where you're trying to go because once you can communicate where you're trying to go, it's easier for the next person to then direct you, right? I may say that, listen, at the moment, do you have a music video, right? Okay, can I see that music video? If I see that music video and I realize that, that the quality of the music video is great, it's, it's, it's a lot easier for me to actually then make a call to the guys at Trace Africa and be like, yo, listen, I've seen this video. Have you guys seen it? All right? And then once I make that call, once I send that email, or once I do that submission, it becomes a lot easier for you to get either playlisted or you now have the attention. Because you need to understand that, especially when it comes to, um, like I was saying, the platforms, right? The bigger the platform, the more there are people trying to get on that platform. So for TV, MTV Base, um, MTV Nigeria, Trace Africa, Trace Nigeria, all of these different regions, you notice that a week, these guys are getting close to 100 and 120 music videos to go through. And out of those 120, they can only play less maybe three or four a week. So it's very easy for them to just go through your stuff and not notice it right? Or to not even like see it at all. But if you have someone who's actually calling and saying, hey, listen, have you guys seen my stuff? Have you guys seen my stuff? Have you guys seen my stuff? They will then actually go back and be like, listen, this guy keeps calling. So there should be something about this product, right? So be able to communicate and also make sure that you don't become annoying. Because I think there's also a fine line between being able to let people know that, yo, listen, I just need two minutes of your time or I just need five minutes of your time. Um, and if they didn't decline, it's fine. You can then move on to the next person. So package your story, package your product, right? Second thing is communicate, right? Once you've communicated, don't just stop there. Carry on working on the product, right? And when I say carry on working on the product is carry on making connections. Your network will get you to the next phase of your career. The bigger you expand your network, the more connections you make. Right, And if all of these people that you're meeting up with are part of the plan, it will just open more doors. So try and not be stagnant, you know, because 
um, when you're on Twitter, your research, and even when it comes to like, you know, um, for example, with, uh, I'll give digital example, for example, like with streaming, right? How do you get your to playlists, right? That's a question you should be asking yourself as an artist. Like, okay, how are people actually consuming music? If I put my music on iTunes, or on Deezer, or on Spotify, or whatever these platforms are, how can I get? How can I make sure that there's more visibility in there? So you actually go onto the internet, or you actually phone someone and you ask, you know, like, listen, I just wanted to find out who is in charge of playlist and editorial playlist and who's in charge of this, 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 this. Once you start putting those pieces together, and this is now where a lot of people who are into PR, who are into plugin, who are into sampling, have got a greater advantage because this is what they've been doing over the years. So they can then come to you and say, listen, you want your song on this platform, on this platform, on this platform, it's gonna cost you $1,500, right? That's another option to take, but it's entirely up to you and it also depends on um, which phase of your, of your career you at? But yeah, carry on making connections, um, carry on researching, carry on reading up. Um, like I was saying that we're in that stage of, 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 of the music business right now where a lot of what's happening is on the internet. You can literally wake up tomorrow and hear that Universal have signed a deal with TikTok or whatever. And you read up on, okay, what is TikTok? What is the return of investment? How has that platform come about? Um, what did they actually do? What is their space in terms of like breaking artists? But that stuff we can then look at much further. I think I want to concentrate more on how we can actually break African artists into the rest of Africa. I don't know if anyone's got any questions at the moment.